this is Barbara Strain of WB Saw Alumni Association. I am very proud to introduce two Saw alumnus who operate a dairy farm. And you are? I'm Isaiah Ayala. And I'm Tara Pickersgill. And what class did you go to, Saw? 09. I was 08. What made you want to operate a dairy farm? Well, um, ever since growing up, I had uh, always had somewhat of, a, of an influence. I had a, a friend who his family owned a dairy farm, and um, even before I went to Saul, uh, I had helped out some uh, at, at the farm and kind of learned a little bit as, as to what it was like. And I remember being in middle school, being in, in seventh and eighth grade is when I first heard of Saul. Um, and I went to an inner city middle school, uh, Roberto Clemente Middle School on Erie Avenue. Uh, rough neighborhood, uh, wasn't too bad. But, um, and you know, when I heard of Saul, I thought that was uh, the golden opportunity to, to like, uh, like, oh my goodness, there's a school like this that exists. Um, and I attended Saul High School, and um, that really, really gained my interest in, into uh, going in, into the dairy business a little more. And, and so that's something, ever since I started at Saul, it's something I knew uh, I wanted to to operate and own a dairy farm. For me, I mean, in high school I was more of a the horse girl. I was always down by the horse barn and I was part of horse club, so I didn't really think about the dairy. But when me and Isaiah got together, you know, he was always about the cows and I kind of just hooked on to him. <laughs> so ever since, I fell in love with the idea and when he said he wanted to start his own dairy, I just completely supported him and I just, I love it every day. It's just part of our life now. So. Do you want to tell me a little bit about your daily routine? Um, daily routine pretty much consists of uh, uh, getting up and uh, first thing I uh, usually do, you know, get up, come here, obviously. and uh, About 5 o'clock in uh, the morning. Yeah, uh, um, mil morning milking starts uh, between 5.30 and 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, so the routine is you, know, you walk through, get your milk house ready, and milk cows. That's the first thing I do in the morning is uh, milk cows. And then um, after that, uh, once the cows are already done, you know, we take care of our special group of cows, um, which are either ones that are either like the one that uh, we have one in the pen uh, that's got a bad leg or, you know, we'll deal with them. Uh, milk them and then deal with whatever their issues are and then do the barn work clean the barn get the cows fed get the calves fed and then eat lunch we need to eat and then uh after that you know we'll take care of whatever other chores we have to do around the barn with if anything that needs fixing because things break all the time uh <laughs> no matter no matter what it is things always break so um you, you know either fix or whatever odd jobs that need to be done around the farm you know we'll get that done during the afternoon and um, anything for the calves, or if we have to take calves to, to the sale or go to a sale or anything like that, we'll, we'll do that. Um, and then pretty much around four o'clock um, is when the morning repeats itself at four o'clock in the evening. We'll feed cows again, we'll milk again, and then later on that night, after we're done milking, take care of the special needs cows, do the barn work, and then go home and go to sleep. So it's 24-7. So it's, it's a 24-7 job. No vacations here? No. No, no. The the only vacation is lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> vacation within yourself, if you want to. <laughs> so. So this is the uh, this is the milk tank, and uh, this is the first thing you see is the bolt tank. So this is a thousand gallon bolt tank. Um, so this is where the milk is stored and cooled and gets picked up every other day. Um, and right now we're currently shipping about eighty three hundred pounds uh, every other day. So we're almost filling it, you know, it's a thousand pounds, three gallons, eight point six pounds. This holds eighty-six hundred pounds, so three hundred more pounds to go before we fill it up and have to get picked up every day. But uh, so it's uh and these are the units that we use to melt. Um, right now they're sitting here uh, for washing. They're already washed and they're ready to go tonight when we melt. milk uh, twice a day, uh, twice a day, uh, you know, five to five is usually our every 12 hours. 
and we milk in an inch and a half glass of like that. An older style uh, kind of pipeline. You know, people go stainless steel now today. But uh, uh, actually, when I went to Seoul, they said I mentioned I have the last pipeline, and uh, so that's something. But uh, it, it does the job. It's pretty good, and uh, it's actually kind of cool because you can see the milk going through the, through the glass pipeline. So, yeah, so this is pretty much uh, the cows are housed. They're housed here. They're fed. Um, they don't currently go out yet, but they will uh, as soon as you know. Fall kicks around, the days get cooler. We'll have them going outside and, and, and doing that kind of stuff. So they're pretty much in here for now, pretty much all the time. That'll change. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this here is Sweetheart. There was a cow at Saul, and it was named Sweetheart, and I think it had a tumor. Was it a tumor? Yeah, it had a really big cyst. It had a really big cyst on its ovary, and it made it act like a bull. And so it's really, really rowdy. And this cow is kind of the same personality. It doesn't have a tumor. It's just how she is. So we named her Sweetheart after that cow. We really like her. She's probably our favorite cow in the barn. So. No, I'm Probably the most tame one. So she's been around that long. She's a good calf. And she's actually Sweetheart's calf, who I introduced earlier on. So she's got that same rough and tumble attitude. Um, you definitely have to love what you do to run a successful business and, 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 and be passionate about it. You know? so. Do you have any special? instructors or mentors at Saul that influenced you? Um, well, yeah, um, I do. Uh, Jim Chaitro was definitely, uh, I had him as a dairy science teacher. Um, I learned a lot from Jim Chaitro. Uh, Kevin Kellerman definitely um, was a big influence. Um, I was a student farmer at Saul uh, ever since my freshman year and um, that was, uh, I guess that was kind of unheard of at the time because there wasn't any freshman student farmers there at the time. and. Uh, and so I had worked with Kevin Kellerman um, for all, all the years that I was at Seoul. And I had learned a lot from him, uh, for sure. Um, definitely learned a lot from him. Um, and all the other uh, resident farmers that were there, um, as far as uh, uh, Dave Weatherall, um, uh, Scott Moser uh, with the equipment. Um, and, you know, they, they were all, they were all uh, really big influences um, uh, for me uh, there. And uh, yeah, Mr. Amoroso definitely uh, was, I don't want to leave him out. 
to thank Tara and Isaiah and their little girl Ava who is really adorable for sharing their stories and helping the WB Saw Alumni Association. Other school like it, you know. There's there's schools that are like it, but there's no school like Saul. Not in Philadelphia. Uh, especially not in Philadelphia. Say bye, everybody.